Hey, Thomas here. Today we're going to be checking out a new product from Refrax, the Clam Jammer, aka the Clam and Anemone Cradle. We're going to look at how this can basically help you keep your clam or anemone happy and in the place you'd like it to stay in, as well as make it a heck of a lot easier to move around and change the place it's in if you ever decide you want to move it. So let's get into it. When it comes to the placement of tridacnid clams, many reefers prefer to keep them on the sand bed for aesthetic reasons and also because some species of tridacnids are often found on the seafloor. The thing is though, tridacnid clams, generally speaking, like to attach themselves to something solid using their bissel threads, which come from underneath the clam from their bissel opening. So that means if left on your sand bed, your crocea, maxima, squamosa, or durasa will most likely end up attaching to the glass bottom of your tank, or worse, just keep fussing about trying to find a place to anchor down, kicking up substrate in the process, and wasting unnecessary energy it could be using to grow. To remedy that, you don't necessarily have to put it on your rockwork. Refrax Clam and Anemone Cradle, aka the Clam Jammer, is a purpose-built pedestal with a deep recess designed specifically to cradle your clam or anemone to provide them with a stable, solid surface to attach to, giving them the support and shelter that they're looking for, making it less likely that they're going to wander around or endlessly fuss about trying to get comfortable. It's made from 100% reef-safe resin, comes in a variety of colors, and has a realistic and natural texture so it blends into your reef rather than standing out like a sore thumb. In the box, you'll find the Reef Racks Clam and Anemone Cradle, aka the Clam Jammer, and that's it. The Clam and Anemone Cradle comes in three different colors, Coraline Purple, Dark Brown, and Gray to best match the rock work in your tank. For example, the purple blends into established tanks with lots of coralline quite nicely, while the dark brown and gray do a good job of matching various types of dry rock. Either way, the textured surface is going to quickly get covered in biofilm and coralline, which means it will blend in seamlessly with your rock work, regardless of the starting color, in no time at all. They measure six and a half inches long, four and three quarters of an inch wide, and one and a half inches high, with the inner recess coming in at roughly three and three quarters of an inch long, one and three quarters of an inch wide, and three quarters of an inch deep, which should be perfect for keeping a variety of young to mid-sized clams safe and secure. It actually does look like a pretty good size for an adult crocea clam or even a maturing maxima clam, I will say though, a young squamosa or durasa will likely outgrow the recess within a year or two, but if they've attached to it, they may just end up on top of it like a pedestal instead of inside of the recess, which is still good. And the size should also work really well for bubble tip, rock flower, maxi carpet, and similar sized anemones. The bottom of the clam jammer is sanded perfectly flat, so it's going to sit nice and flush against the bottom panel of your aquarium, keeping it stable. The slight flange or flare around the base helps it blend in visually and also provides a lip for the substrate to pile up against, which adds to that stability. One of the big benefits that I can really appreciate is that it's going to make moving your clam or anemone around the tank if you decide to move it a heck of a lot easier. Instead of trying to delicately remove the individual bissel threads under the clam or the foot of an anemone from the bottom of your tank, you can just pick up the whole base your clam or anemone is firmly attached to and move it to a new but similar spot in the tank. It is just way more convenient and a lot less invasive for the clam or the anemone. Here are a few quick tips for placement when it comes to most tridactive clams. One, pick a spot that has good light and flow. Clams are often considered to be as light demanding as SPS corals, and they do usually appreciate higher par numbers, so try not to shade them. Number two, your clam has two openings in the center of its frilly mantle. The larger of the two is the inhalant siphon, and the smaller cone-shaped opening that sticks up and out to the side is the exhalant siphon. Clams will usually position themselves so that their larger inhalant siphon is pointed into the direction of water flow so that the water naturally flows into the clam. So when you're positioning your clam on the bottom of the tank, turn the clam jammer so that your clam's inhalant siphon is pointed into the flow and your clam should be less likely to try and reposition itself. Number three, keep your clam away from any corals or anemones that could sting them. While clams often do pretty well next to or near some types of corals like SPS, some soft corals and LPS especially can have a pretty powerful sting, most certainly if they have their sweeper tentacles out and about and the soft mantle of the clam could get irritated or damaged, which can result in the clam not opening fully. So having more space to itself is best. 
If a natural looking and mobile crevice for your clam or anemone matches your reefing mantra, you can go ahead and pick up one of these clam jammers by clicking right here.